Hallelujah. Okay, now, turn to the book of Luke chapter 4. We got to see what was his occupation. What was his occupation? What was so paramount to him? What was so strong in his heart? His intention, his desires, his trust. What was it? Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 43. Or 42 then 43. Are we all there? And when it was day, it was in a particular city or village as the case may be, he departed and went to a desert place, open country. Desert doesn't mean in the bush. Went to an open country. And the people sought him and came unto him and said, Stay him, that he should not depart from them. In other words, they wanted him to stay in that place continuously. They wanted him back. Hallelujah. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. For therefore I am sent. Hallelujah. Now I want to read this from the message translation. He left the next day for an open country, but the crowds went looking and when they found him, clung to him, so he couldn't go on. He told them, don't you realize that there are yet other villages where I have to teach the message of God's kingdom? That this is the way God sent me to do. That's what I'm interested in. Don't you know I have to go to other villages to preach the message of the kingdom? This is the work that God sent me to do. Now, if that is the work God sent him to do, what other work do you think God sent us to do? Are you there? That is why it is not about works. It's about work. God sent him to do one work. Praise the message of the kingdom. To everyone. And if we are called laborers, that automatically becomes our occupation. Am I making sense? If we love him, then we are going to do what he did. The messenger did not have any other message to deliver other than the one given to him by the one that sent him. Because the word sent is the word apostolos. Which means the one that is sent with the message. From where you have the word apostle. Are you there with me? He said, I must go to other villages also to preach the message of the kingdom. For that is the work which the father has sent me to do. He has one work to do. And that's to proclaim what? The message of the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter what you think you want to preach. You want to preach deliverance. You want to preach prosperity. You want to preach faith. You want to preach healing. Fine. But the truth is there is one message. There are no two messages. Every other thing you seem to be clinging on to. Is a shrine in this world message. Called the message of the kingdom. Jesus didn't preach three messages. He preached one message. Any other thing is another gospel. And Paul said out to the Galatian church, he said, if anybody comes to you with another message, which is not the gospel, then it's another gospel. There is one gospel, and that's the gospel of the kingdom of God. Let me ask you this question. What will it benefit you if you labor so much in what you think it has to do with ministry, and the Lord doesn't seem to have an approval for what you are doing because you are doing your own thing and not what himself is concerned about. What benefit do you have in that? Hallelujah. Are you there? Hallelujah. Okay, so let's just move on very quickly. You know, if you check the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse number 1, the Bible says, The former treaties have I made of Theophilus of the things that Jesus began both to do and teach. Understand that. The thing Jesus began both to do and teach. He did some things. He taught some things. Now we can't go beyond the things he taught. We can't go beyond the things he did. He went about doing good. And then the things he taught. What were the things? The things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse number 3. You find it there. It is better you find the mind and the heart of the one you are working with. So that you can truly become a co-laborer. I'm not interested in anything other than what he is interested in. 
Because I know the reward is not about what I did. It's about my obedience to what he wants me to do. Do you understand this? God is not going to reward you because even if you like win the whole world. And if he didn't send you to win the whole world and you won the whole world, it amounts still to nothing before him. Look at what he said in the book of Matthew. He said, go away from me, ye workers of iniquity. And he says about with these signs and wonders, with these miracles. He says, yes, you, are, you did it without law. The word iniquity is anomia in the Greek, which means lawlessness. In other words, you can operate ministry and God didn't send you to operate the ministry you are operating. You are operating under lawlessness. You have no reward. Hallelujah. We must come back again. Go back to the book and read the book and find out his passion was nothing but the kingdom of God. Even Philip went to Samaria. It was God's kingdom. Remember that? Because somebody will tell you I'm an evangelist. I'm an evangelist. I don't have time for any other thing. John 3.16. I'm an evangelist. Philip didn't preach John 3.16. He was an evangelist. When he went to Samaria, he preached the message of the kingdom. The Bible tells me there was Simon the sorcerer in that city. When they begin to hear exactly what Philip was saying, in fact, Philip didn't go there to condemn what the sorcerer was doing. He didn't go there. Why do we condemn people who we think they are doing something wrong or something like that? It's simply because we do not have what it takes to preach the message of the kingdom. Philip went to Samaria, preached the message of the kingdom. Now people turned from Simon the sorcerer and they came to Philip. Are you still there? Why? Because God backed up what Philip was doing. And that's why the people have to come seeking for Philip. The Bible never told me Philip was doing signs and wonders, but people came to him. Come on, think about that. Hallelujah. Okay. So here we go. Jesus is doing one thing, and we should be occupied with think which Jesus did. Only then can we prove that we love him. Because like we read before, 1 John 2. He tells us that if you say you love him, keep his commandment. Remember that? And in Matthew 24 verse 14, he told the apostles, this message of the kingdom shall be preached in all nations for a witness, then the end shall come. You go and preach it. Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 9, the 70s, he sent them out, preach the message of the kingdom. There is no other message, people, that God has sent us to preach. It doesn't matter how prosperous we think we are making it, there is one message and that is the message of the kingdom. And in this meeting, in this conference, we're going to be able to exploit deeply what the kingdom is, when is the kingdom, where shall the kingdom come, as the case may be. We're going to exploit the scriptures to find out this, and then our heart should be at rest, knowing that we are in God's will, and nothing can shake our foundation. Can somebody help me say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. Now get down to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, and we just look at 14 to 15. Mark chapter 1. Hallelujah. Now the scripture said, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. He began his ministry with the gospel of the kingdom. Hello. He began his ministry with the preaching of of the gospel of the kingdom. And saying the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. He told them what to believe. What gospel did he say that you believe? The gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The time is fulfilled. What does that mean? If you search the scriptures you find that. Right from the Old Testament, there were the prophecies about the fulfillment of God's kingdom or the coming of a Messianic kingdom. And there was the expectation of that. And even that which Daniel spoke about, Daniel chapter 4. Right? How that a kingdom shall be given to the saints of the Most High. All of that put together. Jesus came and said, the time is fulfilled. You know that word? I am the one fulfilling those scriptures. The time of those prophetic words is fulfilled. Once it is fulfilled, it is fulfilled. Hallelujah. Remember what he said in Luke chapter 4? 
When he opened the book, he read to them, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Remember that? And he said, today has this scripture be what? Fulfilled. So you must understand that the prophetic word had a fulfillment in Christ. And so if there were expectation of God's kingdom, Jesus came and said, the time is fulfilled. Now is what? The kingdom. Believe the gospel of the kingdom. Repent. When you say repent, what does that mean? Change your mind. Do you understand this? 